All right, let's run through this uh, problem number four and then the box problem. Uh, so we'll just go through the same steps here for four as uh, we have here for three. So you're gonna mark the x-intercepts, which I think we all know are at three and one and negative one. All right, um, let's uh, note the end behavior. Um, if I were to multiply this out, it would be degree 2. This would be degree 2. This is a degree 1. I multiply those together, I get a degree 4. If I multiply everything together, I'll get a degree 5. Uh, so that's an odd degree. I can see how there's a positive 1 here. Positive 1, positive 1. So I'll have a positive 1. A positive 1. X uh, to the fifth. Blah, 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 blah. Right? We're just talking about the end behavior, so it's only about the highest power. Uh, it's odd. We have a positive leading coefficient, so we know it's going to look like this, down to the left, up and to the right. Um, we know that this x-intercept at negative 1 is not a repeated x-intercept, or it's not a, it doesn't come from a repeated factor, so it's going to cross over that x-intercept. It's going to come up here somewhere. It's going to come down. It's going to not cross this x-intercept because it comes from this repeated factor. Uh, it's going to go up here, and this guy right here comes from a repeated factor, right? So it's not going to go through there. It's going to just touch and then come back off. And we see if we go through this x-intercept, touch this one, touch this one, then we would naturally follow the correct end behavior. Um, so we're going to plot some points in between the x-intercepts. So we're going to plug in some... Uh, numbers and to get some y values and uh, see where that takes us. So how about if we plug in 0? Okay, so 0 is going to make us have a negative 3 squared um, and a negative 1 squared and a 1. So we're going to have 9 times 1 times 1. So 0 gives us a 9. There we go right there. So we're going to make sure we go up through that point and down down through here. Okay, now we'll plug in 2. Okay, so 2 minus 3 is negative 1. 2 minus 1 is 1. 2 plus 1 is 3. Uh, make sure you've got that all right, yeah? So 1 squared, negative 1 squared, 1 squared. Uh, that's going to be just 1 times 1 times 3. We get 3. All right. And then that's points in between the x-intercepts, uh, as instructed. And we'll just make sure that the end behavior matches. And as we've discussed many times, how do I know that this is the best picture of the graph, the, graph, the best graph of the polynomial? I don't know that it's the best. I, I don't even know that I come up to 9 and go back down. Maybe I go up higher than 9 and then come back down. Um, as we discussed previously about maximum values and minimum values, we can't be sure all the time that we are at the, the maximum or at the minimum. Um, so we do our best, we plot some points. Um, maybe when I get over here to x is 4, I should be at uh, 12, or, or maybe I'm supposed to be at 9. I, I, I don't know. I won't know until I plug it in, but there's a level of, of, of reasonableness to where we just say, we're done plotting points, we're going to draw the graph as best we can. Um, going to sketch the graph and uh, you'll notice here at the top it says to mark all relative extrema right all the, the maximum values and the minimum values okay here is a relative maximum here is a relative minimum this is also a relative minimum even though they're both in this case we do know that the minimum here is zero right y equals zero y equals 0. These are both minimum values in their relative uh, localized areas, right? In this area, that's the minimum value, right? And right in this area, you can get the highlighter, right in this area, 0 is the, the minimum value, right? In this area, 0 is the minimum value. Here, I just mentioned this a couple minutes ago or a couple moments ago, we don't know for sure that that's the maximum value. We don't. We can't really. We haven't really looked at it hard enough to say uh, y equals nine is the maximum. I don't know that. I would have to investigate it a little bit further. Maybe it is, and maybe it isn't. Right? We would have to 
uh, plug in some numbers, find out, or use some calculus, uh, figure that out. In fact, if you are curious, if you take this equation, so we call f prime of x, or the derivative of f, If you can uh, find the zeros of this function, then you'll find the x values uh, that give you the maximum and minimum values. Oh, look, I missed a minimum or a, a maximum. Hello, right there. Um, if you can solve this, uh, this function, if you can find the zeros of this function, you'll find the x value that gives you this maximum, the x value that gives you this minimum, the x value that gives you this minimum, the x value that gives you this maximum. Um, uh, whatever those x's might be. I don't even know if that equation is solvable by factoring. Um, it may be this very, very tricky equation that uh, winds up being frustrating to try and solve. But uh, there you go. There's, there's the answer to how do we find the exact maximum and minimum. Well, this would give us the x values. And to find the y values, we just take those x values and plug them into the function. It'll tell us uh, how, you know, uh, what the maximum uh, and minimum values are. Um, so there you go. There's that graph, a pretty good graph. We've marked all, m marked all the uh, maximum values and minimum values. And uh, there you go. We're ready to move on to the box problem. So uh, you'll remember in class, we um, started drawing out the diagram. We said uh, that the, we are going to cut out squares that are x in uh, their side length. All the squares are going to be cut out the same size. It makes these flaps. You fold up the flaps, we make a box. And we talked about how they, uh, we're going to fold up this flap here, right? And, uh, and these two guys are going to kind of meet right here at the corner of the box. So the height of the box would be x. The uh, length of this box starts as 30 from end to end. But then we cut out this square and we cut out this square, one from either side. Uh, so we lose an x and we lose another x, so we lose 2x. This side starts as 20 and we also lose 2x, so this is 30 minus 2x and this is 20 minus 2x. Um, so write a function for the volume of the box given the side length of the squares you cut out, right? So I can take this, the width, times the length, times the height, and that will give me the volume. So the volume equals 20 minus 2x times 30 minus 2x times x. Okay. Um, so <coughs> we can uh, multiply this out. Uh, we're going to get 20 times 30 is going to be 600, and we uh, get negative 40, negative 60, so negative 100x, negative 40, negative 60, yeah, and then plus 4x squared times x, that's going to be, I'm going to write this in, in uh, descending order, so 4x to the third minus 100x squared plus 600x. Then we can uh, say, let's back that up a little bit. Um, we can take this, and if we were to graph it, we could find its zeros, its x intercepts, which is easier than it might look. Uh, first, we can divide everything by 4, so we get x cubed minus uh, 25x squared plus 150. Uh, x, 150x. Then we get factor out an x. We're left with x squared minus 25 plus 150 equals 0. Just factor this quadratic now, which we can, which we can. Uh, x minus 15 times x minus 10. And uh, I, I did this off, off screen or while I was uh, had the video paused, and uh, it took me a, a, a couple minutes to 
to get this all factored down. So I uh, don't think I just came up with that lickety split. Um, so we could look at the graph of this real quick. Uh, we have x-intercepts at 0 and 10 and 15. Uh, and <clears throat> we know it would be a th we, we know it is a third degree. It was already multiplied out. So we know the end behavior looks like this. Okay. And uh, none of these factors are repeated, so it must go through all these x-intercepts. So it goes through this one and through this one and through this one, and then goes up like that. Uh, so let's think about this. This is x. What does x represent? Go all the way back to our drawing. X represents the length of the uh, the side length of the squares that we cut out. So if we cut out a, a side length that is uh, 1 through, let's say, 10, uh, what does this axis represent? Well, it represents V, the volume of the box. So for a, a side length of 3, it looks like we get a volume here. It's a positive volume. For a side length of, I don't know, 5 or so, we get some other volume. And then there's some x value, some side length, that gives us the biggest volume possible, right? And then uh, apparently if we go beyond 10, we, uh, we get negative volumes. And then once we go past 15, we get positive volumes again. This stuff in, a, in this real life situation, it kind of doesn't make sense. But uh, let's think about it for a second. If I cut out a, a square that was 10 inches, so that would be like this guy right here. What would happen? Well, I would cut out another square that was also 10 on this other side, and they would meet up. We would have both squares meeting up. Uh, we'd cut out a side length of 10 here as well and here. Okay, What we have in the middle, we'd have the 5 inches left, uh, or the, um, the 10 inches left, that uh, this side length would have because it's 30 to start with. So we just have this 10 inch strip, and when we folded it up, there would it, there's no sides over here. There's no these flaps right here, they don't exist, and so it would just be a a piece of paper that folds in half and has a zero volume, right? And then uh, obviously if I if those side lengths were 15, then uh, 15 inches on this side, 15 inches inches on this side would meet up in the middle on this side, and we we would get a, a zero volume as well. The reason for these negative volumes is because in between 10 and, uh, and 15 inches of side length, uh, this function kind of views that as negative side lengths, right? These would overlap. It's uh, all weird. But uh, we, would, we would get these uh, technically negative volumes if, if uh, a volume is side length times side length times side length. Um, so anyway, let's just concern ourselves with this part of the graph. Somewhere in here is the maximum volume, right? So we can just get out our calculators, okay? And uh, let me show you a little trick that I don't think I got to show all my classes. Uh, here is the original equation for the, the total volume of a box uh, as described. So 4x to the third minus 100x squared plus 600x, okay. Uh, now it gives me that because x actually is stored as a value in my calculator somewhere, uh, but now I'm gonna tell x what to be. I'm gonna tell x to be, what should I tell it to be? I shouldn't tell it to be 10 or 15. If I did, I would just get zero volumes. I shouldn't tell it to be zero. I shouldn't tell it to be anything bigger than 10. Definitely not anything bigger than 15. That doesn't make any sense. I wouldn't have any paper left somewhere between 0 and 10. So let's try 5. So I'll store 5 as x. So 5 store as x. And now I'll bring up this line right here. And I get uh, 1,000. That's pretty big. Can I get something bigger than that? Let's try 6. Let's try 6 stored as x. Uh, now I'll hit enter. 864. Okay. Uh, let's try 4. Let's try 4 stored as x. One thousand fifty-six. that's bigger than the biggest volume I've found so far. 
1056. So what if we try 3? Thousand and eight. So uh, three gives me a thousand and eight. Four gives me a thousand fifty six. Five gives me a thousand. So it looks like it goes down between three and four. What if I try four point one? Let's store that as x. One thousand fifty four point six eight four. So that seems to be getting bigger, right? Um, you know what I could do if I want to see this. Uh, a little more immediately, a little bit more easily, I could put my function into this screen, the y equals screen, uh, 4x to the third. Uh, I wonder, I doubt this will work. Oh no, it worked. 4x to the third minus 100x squared plus uh, 600x. And I'll go into the table, and then I can enter values into the table, anything that I want. And uh, so I could do 4.1, and I get. All right, so I could try 4.2. Oh, not as good. Uh, oh, no, 4 gave me 1,056. That's not new. So uh, how about 3.9? Uh, 3.9 gives me 1,056.3. How about 3.8? 1,055.5. So somewhere between 3.9 and 4 gives me the best uh, volume. Let's try 3.8. Uh, nine, one. Okay, now I'll have to move over here to see more decimal places. Two nine five eight eight four. Two seven six. So this is a little bit bigger, right? And uh, the the that was the point here to three decimal places. Find a size of square uh, that you should cut out to get the maximum volume. So I can just keep playing with this. I can I can keep going. I'll I'll move back up here. Uh, 3.92. You know what is that going to look like? Uh, that's actually bigger. Okay, so 3.93. Uh, is that bigger? Okay, this is uh, 0.303828305. No, that's not bigger. That's smaller. So 3.9. 1 is bigger than 3.9, and 3.92 is bigger than 3.91. The 3.93 is smaller. It gives me a volume that's smaller than I get when I cut out 3.92. So let's try 3.921. Okay. Uh, 3.054, 3.05. Okay, so that's bigger. All right, so we just keep messing around with this until we get uh, the, the biggest volume so far. Uh, where we've gone to three decimal places, right? Would it, would it, would it be bigger if I went 3.922? Uh, 3.9, what about 3.919? Actually, I should, uh, I should move down here. Oh, no, I messed it up. 3.91, uh, no, 921, 921. Okay, what about 3.9? One nine, right? Just a little bit smaller than three point nine two. Let's see here, point three oh four, three oh no. So we definitely want to just keep going down to this three point nine two something, right? So uh, just keep going, keep plugging in those numbers, and and try to get that maximum volume. It'll probably be different for uh, for each person, uh, though. There, there is like one right answer. The, to three decimal places, there is one right answer. Okay, And the volume of the box is just that y value that we were looking at, right? So uh, that's what I wanted you to play around with. Play around with it a little bit. Um, see what you find. Uh, that, is, uh, that is it, except I guess maybe this one last thing. If I take this function and I look at its graph, first of all, I should change the window because it's going to be crazy off the screen. Okay, so I'll change the window. Uh, we know that we're dealing with x values that are like 0 to 10. Those are the ones we care about, so we'll go like negative 1 to 11. Okay, we know the smallest volume we're going to get is a 0 volume that we care about at least. And we're in the, the range of 1,056, so how about 1,060, just so that everything fits on the screen. All right, so there's our graph.
or the part of the graph we care about. Uh, to find this maximum value, it's pretty simple. Uh, I'm gonna say now I'm giving it away, aren't I? So find the maximum we wanna do. Okay, so it's asking the left bound means put the little cursor, which you'll see in a second, to the left side of the maximum. Now put it to the right side of the maximum. Just keep clicking away. And then it says guess, which I could just hit enter again because I'm guessing that it is somewhere in this region. So 3.923.7478. And it gives us this volume. So that's how we can find the, well, not exactly the right Minute, uh, not exactly the right maximum x value for the maximum, the, the exact maximum value, because, well, it's just to a certain number of decimal places. It's definitely rounded at some point. Um, but there you go. Your calculator can find the uh, pretty good approximation of where the maximum is, uh, a very good approximation. Uh, and that is really it. Thanks for watching.